I think the University of Texas has every reason to be proud of Karen. She's extremely skilled at everything she does, and she's a joy to work with. A terrific person with tremendous capabilities. She's a leader in our society. She's an example of what can come out on a university like UT. For a professor to have Outstanding graduate students is one of the more rewarding aspects of our work. I would be glad to take dozens more like her. <laughs> She's really good at understanding people. She's got such a positive can-do attitude. On top of it all, her technical skills are outstanding. The University of Texas at Austin is primary training ground for future astronauts. In 2008, I launched on my second shuttle mission, SCS-124, with Karen. Our job was to take up the new Japanese laboratory called Kibo, taking that laboratory out of the cargo bay of the shuttle and then using the arm to move it and to attach it to the space station. A uh, very big robotic operation that, uh, that uh, Karen was a critical part of. So today, that laboratory is the largest single element of the space station. She has a profound understanding of the space station and the system of the space station. There were two of us for the spacewalkers, and then uh, Karen was in charge of the robotic operation. Somebody that's as good as that has you in their hands or at the end of their robot arm. She's just calm and cool all the time. She had a big success in defining an important new area of research to work on, designing, testing, and computer simulating the next generation of the spacesuit. I was performing my second EVA. Uh, EVA is extravehicular activity. So I was outside the space station. Around 45 minutes into the EVA, I felt water in my helmet. I couldn't see, I couldn't hear, I couldn't breathe through my nose. And I didn't know how long I was going to have before the water completely filled my helmet. And this is where Karen's role became fundamental. She was giving us order what to do with our suits once we are inside. However, I could not respond. So Karen had to rely on her visual to understand whether or not I was executing her order. When finally there was equal pressure between the airlock and the rest of the station, they opened the hatch, and the first space, one of the first spaces I saw was Karen's, very, very distressed. And so seeing her that way, you know, it's a relief and it's also an understanding of how much she cares for her crewmates. It's one of those moments that I will never forget. What I'm most proud about uh, Karen is the person. She combines exceptional intellectual and interpersonal qualities that you do not find very often. She carried the UT colors uh, on orbit with her with pride. Now, mind you, I'm saying this as a proud Texas Aggie. I got a picture of her in the space station floating, uh, wearing her UT booties and those are now on display in the biomedical engineering building. We carried two weeks worth of clothes in our, in our clothing locker. And so imagine my surprise when I opened up my clothing locker and I find this shirt. There are no pictures of me wearing this shirt on orbit. 